The most common drug, the most common herb that I have used in cardiology that is an herb is Hawthorne. And although I was going to discuss um, hibiscus next, I decided to discuss Hawthorne because there's more literature on Hawthorne than hibiscus. Um, as you know, it's the most, one of the most extensively used herbs in cardiology. I think general cardiologists do know about it. It is not only used to treat hypertension, but can, I also use Hawthorne for arrhythmias when we get through the arrhythmia section. I use it for congestive heart failure, stable angina, and a disease called Berger's disease, which is associated with um, blockage of the legs in people who smoke. The nicest thing about Hawthorne, you could use the flowers, the leaves, or the berry. Um, I actually prefer the Hawthorne berry. Um, and the dose, we'll get to the doses, but we'll talk about its action. Um, Hawthorne, as far as a profile, has a very good profile. Um, and as far as it, the reason why I like it, because it contains all its antioxidants. Hawthorne contains all flavonoids, the anthocyanins, the prociphins, and they're responsible for its pharmacological activity. Um, it improves, in cardiology, improves the blood supply to the heart, improves the metabolic process of the heart based on an enzyme level, and it inhibits the angiotensin converting enzyme, or ACE. So Hawthorne has been shown in a number of studies to act like an ACE inhibitor. And an ACE inhibitor, so let's talk about, you know, going from the ACE enzyme converts from angiotensin 2 to angiotensin 1. And by blocking that conversion, you cause vasodilation. So an ACE inhibitor, one of the first true ACE inhibitors out, could be considered Hawthorne. On a pharmacological standpoint, when I was training, the first one was uh, enalapril or Vasotec. And usually you, you will recognize an herbalist, um, an ACE inhibitor, by if the patient gives you a name, it ends in P-R-I-L. So Captopril, enalapril, lisanopril, monopril, uh, plisanopril, um, those are the ACE inhibitors. But the question is, do you really need an ACE inhibitor when we have Hawthorne is also used to block the ACE enzyme. If you block the ACE enzyme, you block the conversion, and this is a conversion that is used in the kidneys and lungs, and blocking the conversion causes vasodilation, and vasodilation therefore would increase blood flow and bring down blood pressure. Um, hypertension, uh, as far as hypertension in Hawthorne, I use it, I really don't have any interaction using Hawthorne with any other conventional medicine. Because Hawthorne is used for arrhythmias, the only medication I think you should be aware of is it can react with the beta blockers. Uh, beta blockers are the drugs like in Topolol. These block the chronotropic as well as the inotropic action of the heart. Chronotropic means heart rate, inotropic means contraction. So a beta blocker, uh, it not only brings down blood pressure, but it also brings down heart rate. Hawthorne does the same thing. So a combination of um, Hawthorne with the beta blocker should be used cautiously. I, I will tell you how I started a low dose beta blocker. Um, if the patient's already on a beta blocker, I will start at a, that dose, cut it in half, and start a adding Hawthorne to that. Um, the most of, I guess most people use the berry, um, which is fine. Um, I think I have to say that even though Foxa, which we'll discuss with arrhythmias, I think Hawthorne is one of the most widely used heart remedies. Um, the, I don't, looking through all the literature, I think it's understood that it works, but I think the mechanism is still unclear. Um, they, some textbooks say it acts like a digitalis or fox glove and where I feel it acts like an inotropic agent by decreasing inotropic or, or contractions of the heart, just decreasing the blood pressure and the heart rate. Um, and that way it has the vasodilator effect. The, the active principle, as I said, is divided into the flavonoids, which would be one group, and probably the uh, prociphins, which would be the second group. Um, there's I guess when you use Hawthorne, we're not knowing whether we get flavonoids or uh, the prociphins, but we're getting a 
a combination of both working together. So I don't think there's one standard reason why Hawthorne works. I think it's based on the chronotropic, the unotropic activity of the actual plant. Um, I find that the berry is more concentrated than the leaf or the flower. Um, they, the, I think the berry has more cardiotonic properties. Um, but I have read that the flower does contain more cardiotonic properties than the berry. Now, if a person is already on Hawthorne, I really don't go above 400 milligrams three times a day. That's the max I would use. I use it at those various doses for different cardiovascular conditions. I do combine it with other herbs, and I'm safely to combine it with ACE or ARB as a conventional medicine, but I wouldn't use the dose of 400 milligrams three times a day if the person's on a beta blocker. If the person's on a beta blocker, I would probably stay with the 120 to 240. Um, some people like to buy the berries, and I tell them to use one to two teaspoons of berries, steep in water and eight ounces of water, and drink that two to three times a day if they like the berry, um, which some people do in the same regard that they like the flower. Um, when it comes to a tink, I use five mLs three times a day. Now, of course, this goes up depending on if it's mild, moderate, or severe hypertension. Um, with severe hypertension, I have gone up to 15 mL three times a day with not a problem. Um, the, the one interaction, and I think that we have to watch with Hawthorne is, as I said, with the beta blocker, because you could get severe hypotension if you go too high up on the Hawthorne with the combination of the beta blocker. Um, it also can increase the effect of foxglove or digitalis. So if someone's on dig and I use Hawthorne, it can alter the effect. That's where we get dig levels. And as far as Hawthorne combined with any of the sedatives, um, I really think Hawthorne itself has to be used a portion because it can cause sedation if the person is already on um, a psychotropic not so much an SSRI, which is a new antidepressant, but it can cause a depressant effect when used with alcohol or um, psychotropics or medicines used for psychosis. Um, and the other thing I think it's important is I've seen it, I haven't seen it written about a lot, but it can decrease the absorption of iron. So um, if someone is using a lot of Hawthorne, I will make sure that I check their iron studies at the same time. No, I don't use it as a simple. Actually, I tell I tell I actually tell the people to get a tea of Hawthorne hibiscus and globe artichoke. Um, and globe artichoke is not the nicest tasting herb, so I use that in let's say um, I would say two ounces of hibiscus, two ounces of Hawthorne, and one ounce of globe artichoke. Buy it loose, uh, have it mixed, and do about three cups a day of that. Um, and that's what I would do if I had to do it as a tea. I don't use it alone. Usually Hawthorne, you know, for hypertension, Hawthorne, although it's described, it's always listed in hypertension. I consider it more of an antiarrhythmic, honestly. Um, and I like to use it with uh, scotch broom, motherwort, and nice lemon cactus. So I use it in combination for the other antiarrhythmic. And when it comes to hibiscus, since there's good studies on hibiscus now, that are coming out, um, I like to combine it with Hawthorne hibiscus and the globe artichokes.